Prelude to the Mahabharata War King Shantanu was a famous, influential emperor in the Kur dynasty, and he was most chivalrous and religious. His wife, Ganga Devi, gave birth to a son named Bhishma, who was a personal expansion of the eight Vasu. However, she disappeared after the birth of the child due to particular circumstances. Later, while the king was on a hunting expedition, he saw an incomparably beautiful princess named Satyavati at the home of Dasaraja, the king of the Nishadas. This princess had actually born in the semen of Uparichada Vasu from the womb of a fish, and the king of Nishada had nourished and nurtured her as if she were his own daughter. Maharaja Shantanu asked the king for permission to marry Princess Satyavati, and Dasaraja consented on the condition that the child born from her womb would be the sole heir to Shantanu's kingdom. Maharaja Shantanu, however, did not accept this condition and returned to his capital. When Prince Bhishma heard about this, he wanted to fulfill his father's desires. He therefore took a great vow to remain a lifelong Brahmajari to ensure that Satyavati's son would indeed succeed the kingdom. Shantanu was thus able to marry Satyavati. In return, he gave Bhishma the bun that he could die according to his own desire. Satyavati bore Maharaj Shantanu two sons, Chitrangana and Vichitra Virya. After Maharaj Shantanu's death, Bhishma made Chitrangada successor to the throne, but Chitrangada died untimely, and Vichitravirya ascended to the throne. Vichitravirya had two wives, Ambika and Ambalika, yet he died at a young age without fathering any children. Mother Satyavati was doubly distressed because the death of her sons left the dynasty without an heir. She summoned her first son, the great sage Vedavyasa, simply by remembering him. To protect the dynasty on her instruction and with Bhishma's approval, Vedavyasa begot sons by Vichitravirya's wives. Abhika bore Dhritarashtra, Ambalika bore Pandu, and the maidservant of Vichitravirya bore the saint Sri Vidura. Dhritarashtra was blind from birth, so his younger brother Pandu was crowned king. Maharaj Pandu was a chivalrous and influential emperor, endowed with all good qualities. He had five sons, of whom Yudhishthira was the eldest. Of Dhritarashtra's one hundred sons, Duryodhan was the eldest. By the influence of time, King Pandu died while all the princes were quite young. So Grandfather Bhishma enthroned Dhritarashtra and made him responsible for protecting the kingdom until the princes grew older. When the five Pandavas and the sons of Dhritarashtra, headed by Duryodhan, reached maturity, a great conflict arose concerning who would succeed the royal throne. King Dhritarashtra favored his sons and wanted Duryodhan to be king by fair means or foul. However, the highly religious grandsire Bhishma could not allow this, being pressured by other respected personalities and citizens. Duryodhan, who was born from a portion of Kali, 
was extremely wicked and irreligious by nature, and he wanted to be the sole monarch without opposition. To this end, he made various conspiracies to kill the Pandavas, all with the secret consent of King Dhritarashtra. Despite repeated requests by Maharishi Vedavyasa, Grand Saya Bhishma, Guru Tron Ajarya, the saintly Vidura and others, Dhritarashtra did not give the Pandavas their due half of the kingdom. However, for external show, he crowned Yudhishthira, crown prince of Hastinapura, and sent him to Varanavad, where Duryodhana planned to kill all the Pandavas by setting fire to a newly built palace. Tritarashtra approved of this heinous plan, but by the will of the Supreme Lord, the Pandavas were saved. In due course of time, the Pandavas married Draupadi. When Duryodhana discovered that they were still alive, he consulted his father again, invited them to Hastinapura. On the order of Grand Saya Bhishma and elders, and at the request of the subjects, the Pandavas were given sovereignty of Kanda Vaprasta. Indra Vaprasta. There, with the assistance of Sri Krishna and the demon named Maya, the Pandavas constructed a wonderful palace and city. Within a short time, they conquered all the mighty kings of India and performed a great Rajasuya Yagya. King Dhritarashtra and Duryodhana became extremely jealous of the Pandavas as a result of the opulence and success of this yagya, and they conspired to defeat them in a gambling match. They took the Pandavas' entire kingdom and forced them into twelve years of exile, and then, for one more year, they had to live incognito. After this prolonged ordeal, Dhritarashtra and Duryodhana still did not return the Pandavas their kingdom. As the Pandavas ambassador, Sri Krishna himself went to Hastinapura and conveyed the request that Duryodhana should at least give them five villages. Duryodhana, however, remained unmoved and would not compromise. He told Krishna, What to speak of five villages? I will not even give the Pandavas enough land to hold the tip of a needle unless they defeat me in battle. Bhagavan Sri Krishna appeared in this world in order to establish religion, to protect the saintly persons and to annihilate the demons. In the course of the Mahabharata battle, he used Arjuna and Bhishma as instruments to assist him in his plan to relieve the enormous burden weighting heavily upon the earth.